Hello YouTube friends, Dr. Teresa Yulrich here. It's getting to be that time of year in my part of the world where I need to start bringing in some of my plants and they either need to go into the house or they'll go into the greenhouse. I do have a simple greenhouse that was built from a kit that my sons bought for me and it sits up elevated on a little bit of a deck I do have inside some bubble wrap. Let me open the door here. And I just have that taped up to offer extra insulation in the winter. I have some benches in here. One is a homemade bench that my husband made for me. Another is a makeshift bench that I put together with some stools or steps and then just put some boards on top. And then I have a cheap set of shelves here that were purchased for two dollars from a garage sale and we adjusted that to make it fit into the greenhouse. You can see the greenhouse is a little bit of a mess right now. It has remnants from when I was refitting the bubble wrap and it has other pieces kind of laying in it. It sort of ends up as a little storage place during the summer and early fall because the pond is close by too. So my task right now is to get this cleaned up well enough that I can start moving the plants in. Well, I have the greenhouse cleaned up and ready to start moving plants in. And I have the heater set up. You'll notice my cord runs from the greenhouse into um, an electrical outlet that we had specially install, uh, installed to run the pond. So, um, in addition to getting things cleaned up, I also added this drape in the doorway for extra protection. And I have my little heater set up, and it is plugged into the thermostat. I love this little dynamo heater. I had it for the first time last winter, and even though it was negative 17 degrees outside, it kept my plants alive. Um, the only die-off I had was from our when our electricity went out for a couple of hours. You'll notice, as I mentioned, everything here is um, elevated off the ground, all of the benches that are homemade or otherwise. And if you aren't aware, raising or elevating your plants off the ground gives them an opportunity to stay warmer since heat rises. One of the things that I like about this little heater is that it has a built-in fan so the heat isn't constantly on. What it'll do is push out some heat, turn on the fan, and then the heat might click off depending on what the thermostat reading is, and it'll circulate that warm air. Uh, all I have in here now, I'm using below the shelves as storage as you can see, but all I have in here now are my copepods in a bucket that I've housed in here all summer and fall, and they're doing fantastic, and I plan to leave them here all winter. And this is a mini rose bush. It actually belongs to my son. I propagated it for him from a parent plant that used to belong to my father who is long departed. So probably in the spring I'll do a video to show you how simple it is, at least with this particular plant, to propagate some more. All right, time to start moving some things in. Well, the pond area is already starting to look a little bit more empty as I move plants inside. You can see I have a quite a bit more to do, but um, it won't take me that long, so let me get moving and getting those in. Okay, I now have moved in my Grand Duke Jasmine. Beautiful flowers that tend to look like roses, so I'll be sure to show that when this one blooms again. These two here were gifts, and those are both Sambic Jasmines, and they're very fragrant. And then here I have a double fold, which basically looks and smells much like a sambuc, but it has more layers in the flowers when it reproduces. Okay, on the lower shelf, just below the jasmines, I have a pot with some geraniums that I grew from seeds as an experiment. 
So um, we'll see if that ends up blooming over the winter and staying healthy. So this will be my first time trying that. Well, I'm almost finished moving everything into the greenhouse. Before I finish up my um, citronella or mosquito plant, I'm gonna have to put that in a bigger pot so it'll survive the winter in the greenhouse. My dwarf date palm trees or pygmy date palm trees, my um, powder puff tree, which typically grows in the south but does not survive in the northern part of the United States, and my acacia tree that I'm trying to make into a type of bonsai tree. This is the kind of tree that you would see typically in the landscape backgrounds of Africa. These are going to come into the house with me. The acacia tree, the powder puff tree, and my palm trees. Um, even though they did very, very well in the greenhouse last year with the heater, and in fact, um, the powder puff tree was blooming beautiful powder puffs, I did lose electricity one day, and I thought I was gonna lose the tree. I thought it was going to die. So I'm going to keep the more delicate things in the house just in case a power outage goes out. And these things are harder to replace, like the acacia tree, which comes from Africa, the pom-pom, or the powder puff tree, which does not grow native to where I live. And of course, the palm trees are not native to my area. Uh, I did have a couple that did not survive when the power went out. So I'm just gonna keep those in the house. So I will go ahead and transplant that mosquito plant and move the other plants in the house. Okay, everything that is going in the greenhouse is in. We are completely ready for winter. And I just need to bring in my other plants to the house. Okay, the remainder of the plants and trees are now in the house, sitting next to one of my indoor plants. And I have a five-way system of grow bulbs that I'll be using to help the plants stay healthy while they're in the house over the winter. I'll post any updates and anything going on in the greenhouse or with these trees as they happen over the winter. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and if you want to be sure to catch any updates, please subscribe to Cowfish Pro. Thank you, and I hope to see you next time.